In this video, you will learn about symmetric key encryption and message authentication. The objective is to take some arbitrary plain text, apply a cryptographic algorithm to it, to generate some ciphertext that can be transported across an untrusted network, and decrypt it with the same key to regenerate the plain text that we started with. To understand this better, let's create a make-believe block cipher. Let's take some desired plain text and divide it into blocks. We'll use 3-bit blocks for our example, but we will see later that AES encryption uses 128-bit blocks. Translating the binary to decimal, we see that our plain text represents the numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3. A common way to encrypt data is to exclusive OR the plain text with a pseudo-random string to generate our ciphertext because the algorithm is reversible, as we will see soon. Note how the XOR algorithm works. 0 XOR with 0 is 0. 0 XOR with 1 or 1 XOR with 0 is 1 and 1 XOR with 1 is 0. Translating the ciphertext into decimal, we see the data is truly different from the plain text. Now, we can transport the ciphertext across the untrusted network and Provided we can recreate the pseudo-RAM string at our destination, we can XOR the ciphertext and the pseudo-random string and recreate the plain text. You may want to check the XOR algorithm to see that it works. We succeeded in providing secrecy over an untrusted network, but we also need to prove integrity of the data. To do that, we need to create a message authentication code or hash of the data. We will start with the ciphertext of the data. Now we need some kind of feedback algorithm that takes the previous input and combines it with the present input and runs it through some function that makes it very hard to go backward. Here is the function we will use. For any input on the left, we'll get the output on the right. So let's create a table of the values of the hash function. We start with the first block, that is 6 which is the first value of our ciphertext and the first value into our XOR logic. Normally, the hash function would have a previous value, but we will assume it is 0. Therefore, 6 XOR 0 is 6, our first computed value. Throwing 6 into our function, we will get 7, the value of this round of the hash function. The next block is 3, and here are the results we will see where 3 is the input to our table, 3 XOR with 7 yields 4, which applied to our function yields 3, and so on for the next block and the next block, making our final output 5. Even with this very simple hashing function, it is difficult to figure out how to modify the data and arrive at the same value 5. However, with the hashing function we're about to see, which has 2 raised to the 384 bits, it is effectively impossible. Once the hash function reaches the other side, the ciphertext we received on the previous slide is put through the same calculation we just performed, and the final output is compared to the value provided. If they are equal, we know the data has not been altered in transit. There you have it, symmetric key encryption with message authentication.